Hello. So continuing with minimum spanning tree, we're going to talk about another algorithm today. This algorithm is going to work incrementally. So we're going to start from a vertex, call it S, and then we're going to find the next vertex, the next edge to add to the minimum spanning tree. Uh, this edge is going to be based on the edge of minimum weight that connects to whatever we have at some point. So suppose that we have a tree that is already being built at this point, and we can have a cut that includes all the edges that we have at this point for that tree. So that is S. We have V minus S, which is everything else which appears here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the edge of minimum weight across the cut, this edge E, and we're going to add it to our current minimum spanning tree but we're always going to keep a connected tree in here, and we're going to just incrementally add edges to that tree. So I'm going to give a very simple proof that this works. So a proof of correctness is going to be by induction. So we're going to assume that I'm doing um, every iteration is going to yield a tree. Let me call it Xi. So let Xi uh, be a partial tree at iteration i of the algorithm. We claim that the following is true. So this is what we have to prove. We claim that xi is contained in some minimum spanning tree of our graph g. So as we said, we're going to prove by induction on, I, uh, on the iteration i. So we start with our basis. So base case is iteration zero. And in iteration zero, we know that the minimum spanning tree that we have at this point is x zero that contains no edges. So the set is going to be the empty set, but we know that the empty set is a subset of any set. So we know that uh, empty set is a subset of m where M is a minimum spanning tree of G. Next, since we're doing this proof by induction, we're going to do our inductive hypothesis. So let's write down our inductive hypothesis. So let's assume that at iteration K, we have that the tree that has been built by the algorithm during iteration K is a subset of a minimum spanning tree M. <clears throat> and so next step, which would be our inductive step, we have to show that the tree built iteration K plus one is a subset of some minimum spanning tree of our graph G. <clears throat> so this comes to how we build this XK plus one so what we do is we take x and we, we create a cut that contains all the vertices that are incident on the edges of x. So we take all the vertices that are incident on the edges of x that we have built so far. And with that, we create our set, our set s. And then we have everything else that is going to be p minus s. So what we do is we take the edge of minimum weight that connects to the vertices in X. So let E be that edge. So E is the edge of minimum weight connected to X. And so this clearly is the edge of minimum weight across the cut. And since it's the edge of minimum weight across the cut by the cut theorem that we had before, then X union E is in some minimum spanning tree t of the graph. And this actually completes the proof that we wanted to do. So now we're in position to write down the algorithm. So first, again, the idea of how this algorithm works. So the algorithm builds the tree, as we were saying. And so this section is all connected because it's just a tree. So this is in S. And this is my set X, right? 
that we said before. So what, what we're looking for is we're going to look for the edge of minimum weight that connects to everything else. So this is E, which is the edge of minimum weight. So to find this edge of minimum weight, we can use a priority Q. Let me call that priority Q, Q. And this priority Q is going to contain uh, the weights of the edges that are connected to each one of the, so the edges that are connecting to those vertices that are in X. And we're going to keep track of all these weights. So all the weights of all these edges will be stored in the priority queue. So in order to find the edge of minimum weight, the only thing that we have to do is we have to uh, find the minimum value from the queue. So we extract min and that should do the trick, right? I extract min, so I extract the one that has minimum weight. So I have this new vertex here that I'm adding. But when I'm adding this, actually we're adding the edge. But of course, uh, we can say that we are adding this vertex that is adjacent to uh, vertex X inside of X. So when we do this, we have to update the value of the corresponding edges because now we found this edge. So this edge has a weight of X to V, but V might already have a weight. So we have, a, V might have already a weight, right? So we have V dot cost might already have a value because this V dot cost might have obtained, been obtained because it was seen by some other uh, edge that was already connected to X. So we have a value for the cost. And so we have to update the value and in order to do that, we must check to see if the weight of the new one that I'm adding, VW, is less than the cost that I already have, then I'm going to have to update the cost of V. So V dot cost is now going to be equal to the weight of X to V. Notice that in the case of minimum spanning tree, we just update the weight. Uh, so second thing to see is that this is very similar to what we did in the case of Dijkstra's algorithm. The only difference is that we are not updating this based on the path. So in the case of Dijkstra, remember we had a path and then we have to update the length of the path. In the case of uh, this algorithm, which is called Prim's algorithm. So in the case of Prim's algorithm, we don't have to update the length of the path. You only have to update the weight of that edge. So this is the only operation that is going to be needed in here. So we can now write down the algorithm. All right, so for, prim for Prim's algorithm, we're going to have this input. We have a graph, has vertices and has edges, and the weight function from the edges to all real numbers. <clears throat> so how this is going to work, so we start by, it, it's going to be very similar to the extra algorithm. So we're going to start by assigning all the weights for each vertex. All the weights are going to be set equal to infinity. So we're going to say cost is equal to infinity. And we're also going to keep track of the tree by keeping track of the predecessor for each vertex. So the previous vertex. So V dot previous is equal to null exactly as we did in the case of the extra algorithm. Then we're going to pick an arbitrary starting point. And for that arbitrary point, we're going to set uh, its distance or its cost equal to zero. So that's the point where we're going to start from. And then we just enqueue that starting point. So now from this priority queue, we're going to start by um, while the queue is not empty, we're going to start removing edges, uh, vertices from there, the one that have minimum cost. So while not queue, so while the queue is not empty, we're going to keep removing those vertices. So we just extract the minimum one, queue dot, extract the minimum. So now V is the minimum edge, so we have X, 
that we were building at that point. And from here we extracted the minimum, so we have the minimum edge. So this was X, this was uh, X, so I extracted V, which has the minimum weight. So I extracted this edge. And what I'm going to do then is to update the corresponding values for all the ver for all those vertices that are adjacent to this vertex. So for each edge <coughs> VU, if the weight exactly what we did before, right? If the weight of the of the edge from V to U is less than the cost that I already had for you, then I update the cost. Going to be equal to the weight. And we also compute the previous. So u dot previous value is equal to v coming from v, right? V u. And we have to decrease since we modify the cost then we have to decrease the value in the priority queue. So we have to decrease key of that vertex U. So this is Prim's algorithm. So that's the indentation that we usually write down. Okay, here we go. All right, so we already proved correctness of the algorithm. Uh, one more thing that I want to say about this algorithm is that we can build then um, the spanning tree in the following way. So at the end, what we're going to have is for each vertex, I have a previous. So if I have a vertex, I have the previous of the vertex. So that creates from this vertex, I have the previous. For this vertex, I have the previous. This vertex, I have the previous and so on. So this actually creates a tree. Then for this vertex, I have the previous. And for this vertex, I have the previous. So I can build this tree by just adding together all those edges. Remember that a tree is going to be just a set of edges as we described before. So the minimum spanning tree that we're finding by this, using this algorithm, so the minimum spanning tree returned by this algorithm is going to be built in the following way. So the tree is going to be equal to take the union of all, from all the vertices in the graph except the starting point, and we take the union of the edge that goes from V, <coughs> from V dot previous to V. So from V dot previous to V. So we take the union of all those edges, and that is going to give me the minimum spanning tree of uh, the graph. So the only thing that is missing from here is the analysis, but the analysis is similar to Dijkstra's. There is no difference. The only difference uh, with respect to Dijkstra's algorithm is uh, how we update the cost instead of just computing, like in this case, the weight. In the case of Dijkstra's algorithm, we have to add, add the current distance, but still the running time is exactly the same. So the running time of Prim's algorithm is going to be exactly the same as Dijkstra's, which is in the order of V plus E log of V, as we said before, for the case of uh, Dijkstra's algorithm. All right, so let's uh, quickly go through an example of Prim's algorithm, and let's use this graph as an example. So we start iteration zero with uh, all those values. We already know where these values came from. So this is the Q. So from this Q, we extract the minimum. The minimum is A. So we extract A. So A goes here. And now for A, I update all the adjacent um, vertices to A. So I take a look at all the edges. So I have in alphabetical order A, B. So B has a weight of one. So I update a one here and I say that I'm coming from A. And then A, C. This has a weight of four, which is less than infinity. So I update the weight of C. Uh, so the uh, cost is going to be four and I'm coming from A. 
everything else remains the same. So this is still infinity null, infinity null, and infinity null. So now this is my current Q. So as you can see, it's like if we had a cut that goes through here and I have the weights one and four. So from those two weights, I pick the one with minimum weight, which corresponds to vertex B. So starting now from B, we're going to take a look at the vertices that are the um, vertices that are adjacent to V to B. So take a look at the vertices adjacent to B. Um, so look at A, but A uh, doesn't count because it's already out of the queue. So I take a look at D. So the weight of D is two was infinity. So I update its weight to two and I'm coming from vertex B. So everything else uh, is going to remain the same because there's nothing else uh, to go to B, nothing else adjacent to B. So continuing now with what we have in the queue. So the next uh, vertex with the smallest weight in the queue is going to be two. Notice that in this case, it's like having this, this S, right? This cut. So you see the weights that cross the cut are two and four. So the one with minimum weight that crosses the cut is going to be corresponding to D. So now I do D and I'm going to take a look at those vertices that are adjacent to D. And in this case, I'm looking at those that are still in the queue. So from D, I can go to C that has a weight of three. So um, three is less than four. So I update that to three and say that I'm coming from, and then from D, I can go to, so that was C, I can go to E as a weight of six, which is smaller than infinity. So I can write the six here and I'm coming from D. And then from D, I can go to F. F has a weight of seven which is less than infinity. So I update it and I put a seven here and say that I'm coming from D. So everything else remains the same. <clears throat> so now from the Q that I have here, I have to extract the minimum. So I see that the minimum is three. So I'm going to extract this value from the Q. So D is going to be extracted. This value here, three it corresponds to vertex C. So I put C here and let's update the corresponding weights. So from C, I can go only to E and this has a weight of five, which is smaller than this six that I have here. So this gets updated to five and I am coming from D, sorry, from C. And from C, basically that's it because A is not in the Q, D is not in the Q, so the only one was E. So everything else, so everything else remains the same. So this is 7D. So I have these two left in my queue. So taking a look at, look at those, <clears throat> this is a five, this is a seven. So this is the one with the smallest weight. So extract E from the queue. So let's put E here. And so from E, I can see where I can go. I can go only to F, which has a value of eight but eight is not less than this one. So uh, this is kept exactly as it was. So now I only have one left in the queue, which is 7D, which I extract it and now I have F. So now we're going to build the tree based on the previous values that I have stored in the tree. And remember that we started from A, so our starting point was A. <clears throat> so we're going to build the corresponding tree. To build the corresponding tree, we're going to take a look at each one of these vertices and take the previous value to compute the corresponding edge that is going to be inserted into T. So taking a look at B, the previous is A. So AB is going to be in the tree. Then we find C, the previous one is D. So DC is going to be in the tree. Take a look at D, the previous one is B, so BD is going to be in the tree. Take a look at E, the previous one is C, so CE is going to be in the tree. 
and then we take a look at f and the previous one is d so df is going to be in the tree so this is our minimum spanning tree so let's take a look at which the, which edges these are just to make sure so ab is going to be this set here so let me mark it like that then we have dc which is this edge here then we have bd which is this edge here then we have ce which is this edge here and then we have df which is this edge here so according to this algorithm the minimum spanning tree is the one that's formed with those so the weight of the tree is going to be the summation of all those weights which is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 right right 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and that is going to give me the weight of the minimum spanning tree for that graph which is going to be so this is 3 plus 3 that's 6 that's 11 that's 18 so that gives me a minimum spanning tree of weight 18. All right, so continuing with our topic of greedy algorithms, I'm going to talk about a way that we can use to somehow compress files. And this topic is called Hoffman encoding. So the idea in Hoffman encoding is as follows. Suppose that we have some kind of text and this text has symbols. So for example, A, B, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, and so on. So it's made up of symbols. Each one of those symbols is represented by a code. Usually this code is going to be in binary. So we're going to be only talking about binary encodings. So each one of those symbols is represented by a code. So A has its code. Usually those codes have uh, 16 bits or something like that. So let's write 16 bits. And the code for B is also going to be 16 bits. and so on. So each one of the codes for each one of the symbols is going to have the same number of bits. So this has uh, the name of a fixed length encoding. All the symbols are represented by the same number of bits. So what we're going to do is we're going to be given a text and we want to try to compress it. But in order to compress, we're going to have, instead of a fixed length encoding, we're going to try to use a variable length encoding. In a variable length encoding, then each one of the symbols is going to have a different length. But how are, going to this, are we going to decide how long each one of those uh, codes is going to be? How do we decide the length of the, each code? So what we do is we're going to look at the text and we're going to see how many times each symbol is going to appear. So we're interested in the frequency of each symbol. And what we want from our code is that those symbols that appear many times are going to have shorter codes. So frequent symbols should get shorter codes. And those symbols that almost never appear are going to get longer codes. So let me try an example of variable length encoding in order to see how this would work. Because we need two operations in order to encode correctly. So we're going to have the initial text. Then we're going to have the encoding of the text. So we need a process here to encode. And then once we have the encoding, we need to be able to decode the text. So we have the code operation to have the decoding of the text and that decoding of the text should be exactly the same as my original text. So this encoding, you can see it as a compression, right? We take the text, we compress it, and then when we decompress it because we decode it, we should be able to get back to my original text. So let's see if uh, any kind of encoding might work. For example, 
let's say that I assign A, suppose that I only have three symbols, and A gets a code of zero, B gets a code of zero, one, and C gets a code of one. So let's see if that code would work. So this is an example, right? So let's see if this encoding would work. So as I said, for encoding, I need to be able to take a message and encode it. And then I should be able to uh, reverse the code and see that I get the original text. So my original text, suppose that it's A, C, B. So I encode it. So A is represented by a zero. C is represented by a one. And B is represented by a zero one. So now I'm only looking at this message, at the encoded text. I forget about the original text. It's no longer available because this is now my compressed version. And so from this encoding, I should be able to obtain the original message. So when I look at it, I look at it in this way. So I look at zero one and say, oh, zero one, that is represent, that is a B. All right, so I put a B here because of this zero one. And then I see a zero, and okay, so a zero is an A, fine, so that's an A, and then I see a one, and I say, oh, the one, that's a C. So I would say, oh, my my original message was B A C. Notice that my original mes message was A C B, so this doesn't work. So why doesn't it work? Well, it doesn't work because if you take a look at this code, the code for B, happens to be zero, 01 but this prefix happens to be also the code of another symbol so in this case it's also the code for a so the problem is that there is ambiguity here i could i could uh, the when decoding this i could decode it as a b or it could be decoded as a and something else that would start with a 1 so um, the idea for this to work correctly is to have a code in such a way that it satisfies the following condition, that no prefix of a code is the code of another symbol. <coughs> and when something satisfies this condition, it's called a prefix-free encoding. So the only encodings that we're going to be interested in is going to be prefix-free encodings. So the question now is, how do we build a prefix-free encoding? Because we need to be able to build a prefix-free encoding. And in order to do that, we can use a tree. So let me illustrate how a tree can be used in order to get a prefix-free encoding. So suppose that I have an encoding that looks like this. And the idea is that I'm going to use the leaves of the tree to represent the symbols. So the symbols are going to be in the leaves of the tree in such a way that then the binary codes are going to be given by those edges. So since we have a unique path in a tree from the root to any leaf, then when I get, for example, this path that goes from here to here, there is no way that a prefix can be a code for another symbol because that could mean that another symbol could have to be uh, encoded inside by um, internal nodes. So using a tree is going to make sure that we have always our prefix free encoding correctly. So of course the idea is going to be to use a binary tree in order to compute the encoding. So let me see uh, what we have, right? We have, we're given a frequency table where we have my symbols and I have the frequencies for each one of those symbols. This can be computed from the original text. And so symbols, I'm just going to represent them with I and just say symbol I has a frequency fi, right? So I have that frequency table that I have given. And I want to build the tree that will generate um, prefix-free encoding. 
So how do we build the tree? Well, we said that we want those that have the lowest frequencies to have larger codes and those that have the highest frequencies, we want them to have shorter codes. So the idea is going to be to use a greedy approach starting from the bottom of the tree and growing the tree up. And how we're going to do that is we're going to start from bottom up by finding the first two vertices with the lowest possible frequencies. Because if we're going bottom up, that means that the ones that have the lowest frequencies are going to want to be, we want, want, to, we want them to be all the way at the bottom of the tree because then they would have the largest codes. So this one would be the one with the lowest frequencies. Let's say that those are Fi and Fj. And what we're going to do is we're going to create for those, we're going to create a tree where these are the leaves. And these actually correspond to actual symbols. But we're going to create an internal node that is going to have a frequency. It doesn't have a symbol, but it has a frequency. And this frequency is going to be equal to the sum of Fi plus Fj. Because it represents the case when uh, we have this symbol or that symbol. So if we look at the text, how many times will that appear? Will this symbol or this symbol appear? Well, it's going to appear this many times, right? Fi plus Fj. And so we create this, uh, let's say, fake symbol because it doesn't have a symbol. It is just going to be um, an internal node of the tree. And using this strategy, we just keep going. And then we find using this one, we find the next smallest one. And then we find the next smallest one and so on. So let me illustrate with a little example how this uh, strategy would work. So suppose that I have that frequency table for each one of my symbols. And I want to create an encoding for that in order to compress a file that would have those. So initially what I have is I have for symbol A, it has frequency 70. For symbol B, it has frequency 3. Symbol C has frequency 20. And symbol D has frequency 37. So if we take a look at all those, uh, I find the ones that have the smallest frequency are B and C. So these two have the smallest frequency. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new node here. And I'm going to, uh, this node is going to have a frequency value of 23. All right, so created a new tree here. Now this has a value of 3, this is 20. But I create a node for a tree that has these as children. And this has a frequency value of 23. And then here I'm going to look at what is left. Okay, so this is basically what is left. There it is. Okay, so from what is left, uh, the two ones with the minimum possible uh, frequency are going to be these two. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to combine these two into a tree that is going to have a new node and it's going to have a frequency of 60. So this is what it looks like at this point. So I'm only looking at the roots of the trees that I'm generating at this point. So I'm only looking at those two. So now those are the two left. And from those two, the one, of course, they are both with a minimum weight. So what I do is I'm going to create a new node here and put those two as children. So this is the final tree that we get. <clears throat> we can assign uh, the binary numbers that are going to be used for the code arbitrarily. So this is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So now we can make sure that this tree works. So the two operations that we need is to encode and to decode. Let me give an example. So we have original text. Let's say that we have a text that I want to encode and then decode. That is A, B, A, C, A. So suppose that is my original text. So the encoding of that text. So A is represented by a zero. B is represented by one zero zero. 
a is represented by a zero c is represented by one zero one and a is going to be represented by a zero so that is my text my encoded text so the encoding of the text now i have to translate it and decode it so now i forget about my original text and i'm just looking at this and trying to decode so i start to start processing so i look at the zero and follow here and i get an a and there is nowhere else to go because this is this i have to traverse until i find the leaf then i i have like one there's a one so now i'm here there's a zero now i am here there's another zero now i'm here so that means that i found a b and there's nowhere else to go because i already found the leaf so i have to start the next symbol so this zero represents the next symbol and that next symbol has to be an a then i find a one i'm here find the zero i'm here find the one i'm here so i found the c and then finally i find the zero and the zero is represent represents an a so this is the, the, the text that I originally had, and I can compare it to the original text, and you will see that this is exactly the same text, so the encoding is correct. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to write down the algorithm for this. So my input is going to be my frequencies. Let me write this nicely. One to n, so that is my input. The output is going to be the encoding. I'm going to be using a priority queue. So using this, uh, I'm going to create a priority queue. So let's say that H is my queue that I'm going to use. So let's use a make queue method that uses the frequencies to create a priority queue. And once we have that queue there, uh, we can be start extracting minimums one at a time. Then I'm going to have a for loop. I'm not going to write here how many times we're going to do that. I'm going to do that in just a second. <coughs> we can also go until the queue is empty, but if we know how many times we're going to do it, we might actually write the number of times. So first I'm going to extract the minimum. So H extract minimum. So I get two values, I and J the two with the smallest possible frequencies. So extract those two values. And then I'm going to create a node with those two as children. And I'm going to assign the frequency of that node. So node k dot frequency for this node that I just created is going to be equal to the frequency of i plus the frequency of j. <clears throat> but this node that I just created has to be inserted back into the queue. So I have to use h.insert to insert that node that I just created back into the queue so that it can be used. And basically that is the algorithm. Uh, so now we ask how many times is this going to be done? Well, every time we extract two and insert one but at the end we want to have the root of the tree that is going to still be there so this actually is going to be done it's going to be repeated from one to n minus one so this is going to be repeated n minus one times at the end the root is going to still be there so i just have to extract the last one and it's going to contain the root so i'm going to return of the, the root of the tree all right so that is it for today so what I'm going to do next time to prove correctness of Hoffman encoding. All right, so that's it for today and see you next time.